This is a human brain. The brain has a central role in everything we feel, think, or do. It has three major parts. The cerebrum is the largest part of the brain and the center for higher level thinking. The cerebellum is at the back of the skull. It coordinates sensory information and muscle movements. The brain stem controls our most basic functions like breathing, heart rate, and senses. The brain contains more than 100 billion nerve cells. These cells, called neurons, create a complex communication network. There are neurons throughout your body, from toes to guts to fingertips. Those neurons carry information to and from the brain. Neurons pass information through the network using a complex exchange of ions, charged particles, and other chemical signals, such as neurotransmitters. This is a picture of one neuron surrounded by its neighbors. It is in a resting state. The movement of ions from inside to outside the neuron is how neurons release neurotransmitters and talk to each other. How does that happen? Neurons have three main parts. The finger-like dendrites receive neurotransmitters from neighboring cells. Neurotransmitters cause changes in the neuron that pass through its cell body and nucleus. Then the axon extends from the cell body towards neighboring neurons. When resting, axons are lined with positive ions on the outside and negative ions on the inside. When the level of neurotransmitters gets high enough, it triggers the neuron's membrane to let positive ions in and release the negative ions. This movement passes down the axon like a wave and reaches the branch-like terminal. So far, our neuron has received neurotransmitters and fired, moving an electrochemical wave of ions down its length. How does it pass information to the next cell? That's where the synapse comes in. The space between neurons is called the synapse. A synapse has three main parts, the terminal of one neuron, the dendrites of the next, and the synaptic gap between them. When a neuron fires and the wave reaches the terminal, the terminal releases neurotransmitters. The neurotransmitters pass across the synaptic gap. Dendrites in the neighboring cell receive the neurons. Then, if conditions are right, the neighboring cell will fire, passing information on through the network. Synapses work on an all-or-nothing basis. They either fire or they don't. The strength of a signal, like the strength of pain, depends on how many neurons fire together. In other words, it's all about the synaptic gap. Many pain medications work by changing how the gap functions, by changing how easy it is for nerves to fire, by changing how neurotransmitters are received, or by changing how many neurotransmitters are available in the system. When it comes to chronic pain, mind the gap. It is where communication between neurons happens.